All right, I'm gonna try to explain to you our combo unit. It's gonna be a little loud, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, I'll start sort of just uh, explaining it, and hopefully you can hear me where I'm sitting, but uh, on the right side of this building is an engine room uh, for a gen set, and I'm gonna tour you in there. Uh, so the gas is being fed to that gen set, it's uh, running a motor, an engine, uh, in this case an 11 liter Doosan. It's approximately 180 kilowatt uh, worth of power. And in gas consumption, that would be somewhere around uh, 50 MCF a day at full load, uh, give or take. So uh, then that power being generated inside is immediately being consumed on this side of the building into you go into that man door. And you see these funky attachments on the outside. This is for uh, segregating the exhaust heat from the intake heat that comes in low. And I'll sort of uh, illustrate why they're designed that way because it's built for uh, heat recirculation when, when a, a customer wants it, and especially in a cold environment. So I will stop there and sort of walk you through the building. This is the engine room. coming out from the fans, the heat's coming out and rising, the sliders can slide out so the user can have the heat come back down. The heat's feeding down here now on my head. So in winter, you can open these sliders and then the heat goes directly back into the intake. Uh, and that's a pre-filter right there. So you can reach in and open this up and clean out that pre-filter. That's just to take out all the large debris like the bugs and the fluff, you can see a lot of fluff in there right now. And this is sort of our proprietary design with rack, uh, computer racks, which I'll show you in a second, raised up above the intake down low. And that allows uh, any anything that does get past the filter should drop out on the floor. And it also enables this heat recirculation mechanism that we're using. Uh, that you normally is very difficult to do on a on a traditional, you know, one-way airflow data center or Bitcoin mine. Uh, you have to get fancy with like additional fan systems to do heat research. So going into the data center, it's a lot quieter than the engine side. So people people say, hey, Bitcoin mining's loud. It's it's not even close to uh, uh, running gen sets. But this is a 180 kilowatt combo. Uh, there's a lot of cables because they're running S9s and well, I think we only had certain cable lengths for them so there's a bit of a rat's nest. But they got 128 S9s in here stacked on shelves. Uh, this can do 100 and up to 180 kilowatt worth of power. Right now they're only running it at about 100 kilowatt. Uh, that's gonna get slowly ramped up a bit more and especially as you add new gen computers. But basically, you know, continuing with our, uh, we sort of got our hash out design, we have a two-stage filter system. The pre-filter, which I showed you on the outside, takes away most of the crap. Then they come, it gets sucked through here in their second stage filter system, which is just typical furnace filters that anyone can, you know, buy and replace. And overall, it gives pretty good filtration. Uh, we either put in like, uh, this is a pleated MERV-8 filter, but we also put in uh, fiberglass uh, when, when more airflow is needed. In this case, it's not, not a crazy amount of airflow is needed. It's a lower power unit or lower power density. But pretty simple. These are all old junky S9s. It's all, uh, all the user needs for 
you know, uh, reducing emissions on an oil well. And this pretty much does the trick. Uh, in behind, I guess, in behind these racks are uh, exhaust fans. Uh, we have a new system now uh, that's fanless. It's a passive cooling with the option to add fans. Uh, but generally, it's a pretty simple setup. The generator uh, feeds effectively a uh, uh, distribution panel shown here. It's a splitting power to two PDUs. So we got a few different PDU options in the works. And this is one of them. And that's being fed straight from the gen set on the other side. So it's a beautiful day in Alberta. An oil producer mining Bitcoin off gas that would normally be wasted. In fact, it'd be vented, which is uh, much worse in terms of emissions footprint than a flare even. So that's why when we deploy these small Bitcoin mines, everyone talks about the big mining, but when you deploy these small Bitcoin mines on, uh, and there's really you know tens of thousands of oil wells that need these, that could use these. And these wells have associated gas. It's sort of like opening up a pop can. The, uh, it foams up, there's gas with the with a can of Coke. Same with an oil well. You produce that oil, it's gonna bring up uh, associated gas uh, in solution with the oil. So some of that gas is actually venting out the top of that tank right there. You sort of see the gooseneck right at the top. Uh, so there's a bit of venting up there, but the bulk of the venting is coming off the gas tree and that's going into this Bitcoin mine. So, I mean, it sort of solves a lot of problems. You, you can, Bitcoin mining will eat up waste gas. Uh, and, you know, that's great because there's only so much in the ground. Uh, it'll reduce emissions uh, at the same time. It helps this producer produce more oil, which uh, I think the whole world wants right now. And... You know, it's uh, for all the uh, political blockades keeping our Canadian natural gas and oil off the market, uh, you can't stop this. So, have fun staying poor, uh, politicians. <laughs>